morning. We're going to begin. Before I introduce our speaker, we have a word from our campus pastor, Michael Lovett. Welcome. I'm Michael Andrew. I'm the campus pastor. I'm here to share just a few words about service day. So one of the ways that we live out part of the Bethel College mission to prepare students for a meaningful lives of work and service is by having an annual service day, which is required for all This is a day of developing connections and relationships in the community, developing connections and relationships with one another, and sharing the gifts, powers, and time with others through service. This year's service day is coming up on Wednesday, September 22, and daytime classes are not held on this day. So you as a student will sign up for a service opportunity either in the morning or the afternoon of about three hours. This year there's a variety of service locations throughout Newton and North Newton, and there's also a few here on campus. So here's how service day typically works. Next Tuesday, the 14th, you'll receive an email from me with a link to a Google Doc that has all of the service locations and the number of, of slots for each location. You'll put your name in one of the slots, and then I'll email you more information about where to go and what to take with you at that particular location. If you're someone who has student teaching, or an internship, or another academic placement, or another conflict, you must fill out an exemption form for student life approval, which will also come out in that same email on the 14th. Otherwise, you're expected to sign up for and be at a service location on the 22nd. Bethel has a long history of serving this community in Newton and North Newton, and I look forward to having you all participate in Service Day in this long-standing tradition later this month. Thank you so much. Another uh, word. Uh, please remember that masks are required in all our classes, including Convo. And uh, we're running a little bit short on the uh, surgical masks that we hand out. Make sure that you've taken one of those and you bring it again and again, uh, instead of getting a new one all the time. That'd be much appreciated as we try not to run through those too quickly. This morning, Sam Haynes is going to be discussing safety at Bethel College and institutional resources related to safety. He'll be discussing basic protocols for tornadoes and fire, uh, moving to safely, safety on campus, including Bethel College's emergency communication system. He'll close the session with a discussion on Bethel College's response to active shooters. And who is Sam Haynes? Well, Sam Haynes is the Vice President for Student, Act student Affairs or Student Life, and he's also the Dean of Students. Sam began his position as Vice President and Dean of Students at Bethel College in spring of 2018. Previous to his Bethel position, he had more than 23 years experience, before you were all born, in the areas of student life and student affairs, including 16 years as an Assistant or Associate Dean position at Amherst College in Massachusetts, through University of Madison, New Jersey, and Scripps College in Claremont. Sam is, Sam is a native of Niagara Falls, New York and he has a bachelor's and a master's degree in English literature from the State University of New York at Fredonia. Please help me welcome Sam Haynes, our convocation speaker and Dean of Students. Thank you, Bob, for that wonderful introduction, and thank you all for the warm applause. I was saying to someone recently, if nothing else, I feel much love from the students at Bethel College, and I love you all dearly as well. I have a lot to talk with you about today, some very important information, so I'm going to go pretty fast today. Um, it's very important that you know that some of it's going to seem basic or simple. It's not. But some of it is going to be things that you're going to hopefully remember right at the time that you need to. So as you heard Bob say, I'm talking about safety and institutional resources at Bethel College. The outline for today includes the following. We're going to talk about storm procedures, specifically tornado, fire, safety on campus, Bethel College emergency communication system, 
active shooter, which is Alice, is our preferred method. And then the Bethel College responds to active shooter situations. And then, of course, it mentions here other institutional resources, which I may get to in the end. So, safety protocols, storm procedures, tornado watch. We have weather conditions that indicate the possibility of one or more tornadoes forming in the area. Um, the continued normal activity, but be observant when you hear that there's a tornado watch. And then, of course, there's the not-so-friendly tornado warning. A tornado has been sighted or detected and may be approaching, so seek shelter immediately. Now, of course, we all hear, you know, tornadoes, lots of them in Kansas, et cetera, et cetera, and they exist all the time. Some people believe there's tornado season, et cetera, et cetera. There's no season. Um, if the right conditions exist, a tornado could emerge at any point in time, so we need to act accordingly when they do. So, there will be a sound, um, you will hear a sound, and hopefully at some point we will have an exercise so that you'll know what the sound is. I know once a month um, the county has a drill where they ring the bell or it's a ringing sound. Some of you may have heard it before, it's usually the first Monday or something like that in this, um, of each month, but anyway, there's a sound. And so you would take shelter immediately, stay away from areas with windows, in classrooms and residence halls, stand in the interior hallway or on the lower floor, preferably in a basement. Safe areas during a tornado warning are in Howery Hall, the basement hallways and basement lounge, both hall the interior hallways, work and teen court, north and south basement laundry and rec rooms. Safe areas during a tornado in the administrative building, you go to the ground floor interior walls, restrooms or janitor closet. And the FAC would be the music wing, restrooms in 141. In the front center, in the library, room four, welding area, north wall. Goring Hall in the basement hallway, Kaufman Museum, the east end, the kitchen, restrooms, and hallway. And then Kip Four, you go into the basement. In the Cradle Science Center, you go to the lower level basement hallway. In the Lizy House, the basement. And in advance, of course, the library, the lower level restroom and hallways. And Mem Hall, basement hallways in this building. And the Short Show Student Center, restrooms and hallway. And then the Thresher Stadium and the restrooms. Interesting. There's a stadium. Okay, anyway. Thresher Gym, I'll check into that. I'll get back to you about that. But that's where you go. Thresher Gym, West End Restrooms, or Memorial Hall Basement. And then, of course, in the Well Academic Center on the lower level hallway and original building. Fire. I know this sounds very simple, but you'll be surprised how many people forget what to do when there's an actual fire or when they think there's a fire. In case of a fire, pull the fire alarm. Leave the building immediately at the sound of the alarm proceeding to the nearest exit. Don't wait around for your friends. Don't try to be a hero and try to tell everyone in the building. Just exit. In case of a fire, keep moving and do not push or crowd. Move a safe distance from the building and do not re-enter until the Bethel College staff tells you to do so. A last tip in reference to fires on campus, if you live in a residence hall, there will be fire safety drills coming and you'll be told a designated area where to go. Please make sure you go to that designated area for in the event of a real fire that we have deducted that it's actually a fire, we're going to do a roll call so that we can take account of where every student that lives in that building is. So please make sure you go to that designated area. Did you know that the Bethel College has a plan to address matters of safety on campus? Matters of emergency at all times? Ooh. Well, we do. We have people on call 24 hours a day to address these concerns. During the weekday on Monday through Friday, 
you will contact the Office of Student Life between 8 and 5 p.m. We will address the concerns as they come up. But when the office is closed, we have two on-call teams. The first one is the CA um, on-call team. The CAs are our first responders on campus. They are trained to take care of all types of emergencies and do an amazing job. So at this point, I would like to acknowledge our CAs for the amazing work that they do. And I'm gonna ask the CAs who are here to stand so that your peers and anyone else that can see you out there will be able to recognize who you are for the great work you're doing. So we have Alexio Taj Munnings. Stand up, Taj. Just stand up, we'll clap them all in the end. Landon Burns, Michael Check, Jesse McMichael, we call Bear, fondly, Aubrey Green, there in Howard Hall. And in both Hall, we have Thomas White, Haley Hill, Evelyn, Marisa, Lozano. And then in Working Team Hall, we have Drana Lennox, Rachel Geyer, and of course, Reagan Cowan. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> the CAs are doing an amazing job, and they're trained for all types of emergencies, and I can't tell you how grateful I am for the work that they do daily, and I know you are too, particularly our students who live on campus. Then there's a second round of on-call people. And that's the professional staff, and I've, I've asked them to join me today so you can see who they are, so I'm going to ask them to come up. And it's the professional on-call team. Larry Shawano, come. I know. Yay, let's give him a clap. The professional on-call team includes Larry Rice, who's our coordinator for Residence Live. Shawana Gonzalez, one of our coordinators of Residence Live. Denton Hudspeth, who is a football coach staff. And of course, Luke Cottage, who's on the soccer coaching staff. And Daylon Markham, who is also football coaching staff. These folks are the backup to the on-call team for the CAs when they need assistance. We have someone at Bethel College on call every day, 24 hours a day, all year long. So that means for all of those of you who live off campus, if you call the following number, where did I put it? Here it is, 316-284-5324, which is the Student Life Office, someone will assist you in some capacity. Now, of course, we want to make sure that if you're here and nearby, we will do that. But even if you're far away, we will do our best to assist you at all times. And these people are the people who back up the CAs for the wonderful job that they do. So we, in other words, as Shawana was speaking at me the other day, we got you covered. Thank you, folks. Thank you. There's one other person that's on this team, and that will be the coordinator of student activities in residence life. Once we hire someone, that person will join the team of professional staff who will support the CAs when they need assistance. So you're probably thinking, who supports the on-call professional staff? That would be me. Um, the professional on-call team has access to contact me for consult or assistance at any time, all day, every day, when needed. Um, luckily for me, it, they've been capable to handle situations that occur and not necessarily need my help, but I'm the backup to the on-call team, and we are ready to do what we need to do to keep you safe. So, Speaking of being safe, there's other safety resources that we have. We at Bethel College partner with the North Newton Police Department. Um, the North Newton Police Department, our friends across the street, come to our aid whenever we call them for assistance for emergencies, and they're always willing to help assist in anything that they can to help us get through all types of emergency situations. They do rounds on campus, on both foot and in their vehicles, and they're available to assist us for matters that one could not even be sure of exactly what. But I can tell you this, that they're here to do what they can to keep us safe and to make sure that everyone is doing what they need to do to have a healthy environment that they feel comfortable and safe in. 
One of the other measures that the college has done over the years since I've been here and continue to work on, and um, the Student Government Association has also assisted, is that we've improved the lighting on campus. Thank you, SGA folks who are sitting up front who have partnered with the college to continue to increase the lighting on campus so that people can feel safe. And I invite any one of you that if you should see a light not working, to please let us know because we want to make sure that our walkways and, and parking lots are light, you know, bright and light so that you can feel safe and do what you need to do. Another resource is um, the National Suicide Hotline. Sometimes when people are feeling in peril or feeling challenged, there's numbers that you could call when you want to have someone to talk to, and the numbers for the National Suicide Hotline are 1-800-273-8255 and 1-800-784-2433. And then, of course, if there's something else going on that involves safety and you want to make sure that we learn about it, you can contact us through the Student Concern Form that's located on Thresher Connect. Those forms are sent directly to the Student Life Team and we see them in real time. And also, of course, unfortunately, when there's matters involving Title IX, there's a Title IX report form as well. Bethel College has an emergency communication system on campus. Um, we have the Thresher Alert. An alert may be sent for all major events. All students will receive an alert via the mobile number if they've entered it into Thresher Connect. So if you haven't done so already, please make sure that we have your number so that when there is a Thresher Alert, you'll get one. I think the last time we had one was last spring when we had some inclement weather and classes were canceled, but it could be for any type of emergency. So again, please make sure that your mobile number is listed with the college by entering it into Thresher Connect. In the event of a crisis situation, students may be notified by Bethel email, Bethel website, and the loudspeaker system on campus. Now, I know you're probably thinking loudspeaker system. I've never seen any big speakers, and I certainly haven't heard any real music that I'm dancing to going to class or anything like that. They're there, and we're going to be testing those systems this spring so you'll be able to hear them and know what they sound like. So in the case of emergency, you'll be able to hear what the loudspeakers sound like. We also have, for emergency purposes, red metal boxes on campus where you could go for an emergency reason and dial 911. There's one located at Warpentine Court on the east side of Mod 1A next to a parking lot, to the parking lot, at Howard Hall on the west wall left of the front sidewalk, at Show Student Center left of the front entrance, at Gory Hall west exterior wall, and then of course at the FAC at the west entrance. Have you seen these around campus? Sure you have. At first, when they first came, and I was working with SGA to get them, I, I called it this ET looking thing with the blue light trying to phone home. Okay, I just dated myself, okay. Okay, give me a laugh, okay, phone home, phone for emergencies, ha ha ha. Okay, anyway, these are the new emergency stations that we have here at Bethel College to help us continue to be safe and to act quickly if in peril or in need of help. Basically, in the spring of 2020, the Student Government Association, in partnership with the college, secured the first emergency station complete with the blue light feature. An outside donor provided the resources to secure the second emergency station in the spring of 2021. Our goal and plan from the beginning has been to add one of these stations on campus every year until we are satisfied that we have enough stations to address emergency needs. Um, the stations are hard to miss, of course, due to their height and the blue light feature. The purpose of the new emergency station is to support um, and promote safety on campus. Some of the larger universities and colleges in the country have these stations, and we have joined the ranks with the rest to continue to keep our campus safe. One emergency station is located on the walking path between the south entry of the Will Academic Center and the northeast corner of Howery Hall, and the other one is located on the east side of the Fine Arts Center parking lot between Schultz Center and the Fine Arts Center. So, that brings me to ALICE. ALICE is not a person, it's an acronym that stands for what one does in the case of active shooter. 
and it's a very serious topic. So before I go any further, I'd like to issue a trigger warning. The following content may be distressing for some. And Jill Hoops, our Director of Student Wellness, is here if anyone would like to talk with her. She's in the back. So if you're wondering why I'm speaking to you all about Alice today, it's because I am the official certified Alice instructor for Bethel College. Yeah, I know it sounds dog just showing everything because it is, and it's serious. Back in 2018, I completed 16 hours of in-person training, which included active shooter drills and scenarios where I had to act with others in responding to active shooters, including being a victim and shot with foam bullets. I was required to participate and create a video and also provide an instruction with small groups to teach people in person on how to respond and use Alice concepts. Once I completed the required hours, which again was 16 hours, I had to complete six tests online for each section, scoring 100 on each test before I could move forward. And once I completed that, I became officially certified Alice instructor. So those of you who are taking rigorous tests in preparation for school and other assignments, I got it, I understand. I sat there sitting there sweating, thinking, I gotta get 100, and I got it, and I'm certified. The North Carolina Police has a, um, officers who are also ALA certified, and they are permitted to provide training in North Newton. I'm only permitted to provide Alice training here at Bethel College, as I'm only certified for Bethel. In my certification, I was recertified a couple weeks ago, took the whole six test again, and I'm now certified until 2025, I mean 23. So it's really a two-year process of certification. Alice, knowledge is power. That's what it's all about when dealing with an active shooter situation. There's a sense of security in having a plan when confronted by an active shooter event. Training equals knowledge, and that's what this is about. And knowledge could be the difference between survive or limited casualties. What is Alice? It's a proactive approach that provides multiple options beyond traditional lockdowns. Alice is the new standard for many organizations. There's other types, you know, when you lock down or do other things that you're instructed to do, but Alice seems to be the most proactive and has the most options. It's research-based and supported, and it increases the odds of survival. Increased odds of survival, as I just said, it assumes every event is not the same. Most importantly about Alice, Alice concepts are not sequential. In other words, you don't do A and then L and then I and C and E. You use what's most appropriate given the circumstance that you're dealing with. Any of these options might be your best and first option. So, there's a little picture of me and a friend of mine. I um, brought this up on purpose to say to all of you that none of us will never know or could be ever certain of exactly when and where we might be connected or involved with the active shooter situation, either directly or indirectly. Um, the bottom line of the story is, is that my friend Kim here, um, her name is Kimberly Morris, and I'm sitting with her we just finished going to Disneyland in Florida, and I was visiting her and her grandmother, and I had a wonderful time. She's the person that, um, after I got my first job in student life, she's the second person that I hired, and we became good friends well after she left the job. Um, unfortunately, um, Kimberly lost her life in the active shooter incident. She was the first female body identified in the Orlando shooting. Um, to this day, it's still shocking to me, especially the way that I found out about it. Like most people in the nation, I was watching the news, and they brought up the pictures of the first four people, and her picture was the last of the four. And I literally screamed and fell on the floor. I knew she lived in Orlando. She's one of two people I knew who lived there. And I was devastated to find out that she was one of the people who passed away in that shooting. Mm -hmm. 
FYI, the five deadly shootings in the United States include the following. On 10-1-17, the Las Vegas shooting killed 58 people, were killed. 6-12-2016, of course, I just mentioned the Orlando shooting, 49 people were killed. 4-16-07 in Blacksburg, Virginia, 32 killed. 12-14-12, Newton, Connecticut, 27 killed. 20 of them were children. And 11-5-17, the Sutherland Springs, Texas, 26 were killed, including one unborn child. Even last weekend, everyone, if you watched the news and have heard, there was an active shooter in Wichita at a nightclub. Six people were injured and one was killed last weekend. Alice is important because active shooters continue to cause grief and distress and tragedy in our world. ALICE stands for Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, and Evacuate. The A is for Alert, the initial awareness of an event, basically. This could be the sound of gunfire, screams, loud voices, texts, or phone call, etc. L is for lockdown. Maybe be, it may be the best option when you cannot evacuate. Remember, I said a few moments ago that Alice is not sequential. So that's why I'm a fan of it and it's a very good method because you have to decide which parts of Alice is most essential given the circumstance. In a lockdown, do not open the door for anyone. Lock and barricade the door with anything available. Spread out with counter devices, and I'll talk about counter in a minute. During my training, I was in a room where I had to work with a group of people, and we were in the process of a lockdown, and we were doing a counter, and we used our belts to tie around the doorknobs and held to the sides of each one so that when the shooter came to the door, the shooter was unable to open the door. What I learned during my training is that shooters don't spend too much time trying to get in spaces and doing other things, so these methods actually work. Barricade, it's just like it sounds. Close and lock the door. Look at the locking mechanism. Again, use belts or cords to help secure it. And use everything you can, furniture, chairs, etc. One of the scenarios I was in, we literally moved every piece of furniture in the room in front of the door. And we hunkered down and waited for information because that was the best option for that particular scenario. It might be the best option for a scenario you may find yourself in at some point. Hopefully you never will. In the lockdown, do not huddle. Turn off the lights and cover the windows. Dial 911 when it is safe to do so and look for an alternative escape route. Gather first aid supplies if available. The I and Alice is for inform. Pass along information. Who, the description of the assailants if you should happen to see them. What, shooting, threatening, situations, stabbing, and of course where the location. Dial 911 when it's safe to do so. The C is for counter. It's about taking by control and not fighting. Again, some people get it confused and think that, oh, you know, the, in a counter situation, a per person is, is fighting with the shooter. No, 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 no. You're doing something to disrupt the shooter and you're doing counter actions. Countering is a personal choice and often a last resort. Um, especially when you're unable to escape the space where the shooter has entered. Consider countering if the shooter comes into the room before you can barricade the door or if the barricade is breached. Action beats reactions. 
There are many ways to counter without fighting or using violence. Always remember defense versus offense. It may be the last resort. So when you're countering someone, you could do it in a number of ways. Distractions, such as yelling as you move, can help interrupt the process of shooting accurately. Throwing items to the face can disrupt their vision and thought processes, called a OODA loop. These are types of counter actions. Restraining the shooter through a swarm. A swarm is a number of people in the room rushing the shooter as soon as they can get them and get them down. The reason why this is often a last resort, because people can get hurt, but what we've learned is that it saves lives as soon as the, the shooter is contained. Here's some shooting facts for you. Active shooter history shows us that killers have nearly 70% hit ratios. Law enforcement ratios are around 40. Why? Because these folks who are killing will shoot anyone if they can. That's why a counter is an option. The discrepancy is due to static targets, moving targets versus sitting targets, etc. Shooters tend to shoot at stationary targets and at close range. They take the easiest targets, and they are less likely to work at taking down a target. So, swarms, oodle loops, throwing things, screaming, shouting. I was in one scenario, everybody threw their book bags and knocked them over. The rest of the guys tacked them down and held them until the police came. Again, it could be the best option. He is evacuating. Look for safe routes away from danger. Focus on movement and distance. Make yourself a difficult target. Stay low, move quickly. Use cover. Don't run in a straight line. Okay, I'm trying to remember what they told me. I have a video for you, everyone. And I forgot what they told me to do. Everyone, let's give Damon an applause. He's great. He's my hero. Because he's still around to use the laptop. assailant comes onto a campus intending on doing harm. What can you do to protect yourself and others? I'm Chief Ed McSheffrey of the California University of Pennsylvania Police Department, and we'd like to share with you a set of practices designed to increase the chances of surviving an active assailant incident. Here at Cal U, we use the ALICE concept. ALICE stands for Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, and evacuate. What follows are three scenarios dealing with an active assailant on campus using the Alice concept. To all appearances, he was just an average guy. I didn't know him, but a friend of mine did. I had class with him. He always seemed angry. I had class with him, but didn't really know him well because he never participated much. I really knew him because he dated my roommate, but then they broke up. How did he get into this mindset? We don't know. I didn't even know he had a gun. He'd actually been trained for this. showed up on campus. 
Williams, there were some telltale signs that he was an active sailor, primarily carrying a large bag, way too large to be just a book bag, indicating the possibility of weapons and ammunition. Two students noticed the assailant entering a building with a weapon. They immediately located the campus emergency phone and notified the police. In making that call, the students initiated the first step of violence to alert, and a text alert was sent to the campus community advising of a potential threat. All officers were notified immediately and put into action. At this point, let's look at scenario A. Last Saturday, we were talking about how people in this room and to say things in a different way. I was not to shoot it down. <laughs> Let's take a look at what went right in scenario A. The professor received the alert through university network. Given there were no signs of gunshots or struggle in the building, she made the decision to evacuate. She told us to run, to scatter, to find a safe place. This action deprived the assailant of a captured set of targets. Now let's move on to scenario B. Last Saturday, we were talking about how people in this room had to say things in a different Again, by utilizing the Alice concept, we have a positive outcome. Let's take a look at why. In scenario B, the assailant makes his way into a building, shots are fired, and his presence is known. She orders the students to barricade the door, turn off the lights, turn off cell phones, and move themselves away from the door as not to be a target. Had the students been in a room with an outward open door, they could have secured the room by attaching a belt, extension cord, computer cable, necktie, or something to the handle or door closure, deterring the assailant from entering. She told us to stay as quiet as we could and stay away from the door. And we did. And then he moved on. At this point, you should be quietly working with others formulating a plan to counter the assailant in the event that he gains access to the room. This is what we'll be examining in the scenario C. Last class day, we were talking about how people in this room had to say things in a different way. Guys, just shoot them. <laughs> Let's take a look at scenario C and see what they did correct. When the assailant made his way through the door, the students didn't freeze. I just threw my backpack right at his face. They rushed him as a group. The young lady threw a bag at his face, distracting him. This deprived him of any one clear target, and they were able to take him to the ground. Once on the ground, they got the firearm away from him, and other students secured the weapon underneath the garbage can. They made no effort other than to restrain the assailant and wait for the appropriate police response. Remember, officers were responding in a tactical fashion. It is vital that you listen to their instruction. They don't know who the assailant is. You just have to listen to them. For everyone's safety, it is best to keep your hands in the air, hands open, make no sudden movements, and listen to the police commands. Yeah, we're all fine. Yeah, I'm safe. <laughs> While it is impossible for us to cover every scenario you may encounter, by utilizing the Alice concepts, 
you have a better chance of surviving one of these critical incidents. Remember, alert, lock down, inform, counter, and evacuate. Because the students listened to the officer's commands, officers were able to get the assailant detained and the students to safety. I made it. I made it. I made it because I knew what to do. Thank you, everyone, for your patience for watching that very serious video. I want to go really fast, but I need to talk to you about what to do when the police arrive. Bethel College is a response to active shooting situation. The North Newton Police, the Newton Police, the Harvey County Sheriff, and Highway um, Patrol, any combination therein could come to Bethel in response to active shooting situation. The primary focus is to stop the threat, and it will be heightened state of awareness and will not stop to care for wounded until the threat is over. So don't be distracted if they're not running to wounded folks. They're trying to find out who the threat, where the threat is coming from, and will continue to do that until it's over. When you encounter law enforcement, do not reach for them or make sudden moves toward them. Remember, they don't know who the active shooter is upon arrival. Do not keep any items in your hands as you evacuate or move towards law enforcement. If you are able to remove the weapon from the shooter, do not hold or point the weapon at anyone. As you saw in the video, they covered it up with the trash can and kept it away from the shooter. You call 911, and after calling 911, only when you're safe, um, call the Student Life Office. It's our hope, and we intend that you will be receiving information from us if we should ever encounter an active shooter via your phones and other devices that we have here at Bethel. The college will initiate the loudspeaker emergency system if we should have something going on on campus. Send additional information via email to your Bethel KS account, not your personal account. And send additional information via text and cell phone. Make sure your account, your numbers is listed. Find a safe location, deny entry, wait for the all clear, and if locked out, go to the NNPD across the street. So, there you have it, folks. I appreciate you and your time. Do you have any questions for me real quick? This is a very serious situation. No, oh, 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 oh. don't go yet. Okay, well, you can go. <laughs> Thank you.